I get myself situated. Today, I have not put any makeup on. I just got out of the shower. And um, I don't plan on making myself look good for this video. Because we're gonna, oh, you're so sweet. Sorry, Winston just sat on the bed. Um, we're gonna be talking about body image. And um, I've tried to make myself the most comfortable while filming. Like I have my fan on for white noise. I have my dog with me and I threw a crystal on around my neck um, <laughs> because I am very uncomfortable um, being in front of the camera like this. I have the strongest urge to go change out of my PJs and put makeup on. Uh, but we're not gonna do that because um, I'd rather film this video with the raw natural me. The me that I don't really enjoy showing people. <laughs> so yes, I have just gotten out of the shower, there's no makeup on, um, and I'm wearing my PJs and I'm a little bit uncomfortable but I think it is important to show that it's okay to look like this. Everyone looks like this. Like I'm super insecure about the fact that there's acne on my forehead and I haven't covered it up. Sorry, Winston is just, he's being really cute. Um, so we're gonna get into this episode. So while I am talking about the topic of body image, I am also going to be running through um, some eating disorders, um, well definitions of eating disorders, because a big part of people's image on their body relates to certain eating habits, strategies, and disorders. So the eating disorders that I have researched are anorexia, bulimia, and binge eating disorder. These are the three most well-known eating disorders. I'm pretty positive that there are other subcategories and different versions or even different types of eating disorders, but these are the ones that are the biggest and well-known and would be the easiest to discuss at this moment. Just for, you know, getting the basics on body image and eating disorders. So, Definition of anorexia, it is a person who doesn't maintain a normal body weight because they refuse to eat enough, often exercise obsessively, and sometimes force themselves to vomit or use laxatives to lose weight. It is diagnosed when patients weigh at least 15% less than the normal healthy weight expected for their height. Keeping in mind while I'm talking about these eating disorders, a lot of people believe that the best way you can notice an eating disorder is just off of how a person looks. That is not true. Eating disorders manifest within people in many different ways. A majority of the time when you notice an eating disorder within someone, you are noticing the way that their body changes. However, it doesn't always physically show on a person. That being said, um, that's why it's so tricky to notice an eating disorder within somebody. The next one is bulimia. Um, the definition of bulimia is people with bulimia can be slightly underweight, normal weight, or even overweight or obese. See? <laughs> Different body types. Um, they are not as underweight as those with anorexia. Patients experience binge eating, which happens frequently. They will eat so much food rapidly until they are interrupted, fall asleep, or receive stomach pains. After binging for fear of becoming overweight, they will throw up their food or use laxatives. This process may happen many times a week or many times a day. This one is also shown in mainstream media, just as anorexia is, um, you know, where people will eat and then throw up immediately after. Of course, um, this is one of the other well-known eating disorders. The last one we have is um, binge eating disorder. Definition is patients have episodes of binge eating in which they consume very large quantities of food in a brief period of time. They do not try to get rid of the consumed food. They binge eat chronically. So, usually with binge eating disorder, um, you know, 
people binge eat either because of past experiences, psychological reasons, traumatic experiences they have been through, and usually food is their source of comfort within themselves. So I was around 17 years old. Um, my friend passed away and that was a really hard blow for my family and their family of course. Um, I did not cope well and I started really suffering from um, general anxiety and major depression and that's kind of what it started as and I think that a lot of times when people suffer from things like that um, lack of eating or overeating tends to come with it as like a sub issue mm -hmm. um, or like com comorbidity but um, I started struggling more and more with it and I actually had a therapist at that point um, for the depression and anxiety who I told that I was struggling to eat and she said why don't you start counting calories to try and figure out like where you can add things into your diet and that's kind of when I started to spiral um, she definitely didn't know how to treat eating disorders. I don't put any blame on her at all um, because everyone has a specialty and um, but I think that's where it all kind of started. So I originally I kind of started out with anorexia and I went through a lot of different types of treatment and um, it slowly but surely morphed into anorexia binge purge subtype. It's different than bulimia because people who are bulimic eat like a regular amount of food and binge and purge. Um, people who had the subtype with anorexia tend to like eat as little as possible throughout the day and then binge and purge. Um, so it kind of morphed into that. I think one of the biggest struggles with starting out with an eating disorder is that it's under the guise of like I am trying to be healthy, mm -hmm. like I'm trying to you know eat better and eat um, the right foods, good foods. I had a very rigid schedule of eating. Um, it was always the same foods, um, banana with peanut butter in the morning and yogurt and almonds at lunch. and whatever my mom was serving usually um, but like I would try to cover my plate with as much vegetables as possible and um, make it look like my plate was full when it wasn't. I think a big misconception with anorexia is that you just don't eat. Like you just don't eat at all. That's really not true. It's just that you're not eating enough to fuel your body um, whether that be because you're under eating um, or because you're under eating and over exercising. So I found that um, like struggling with restriction really fogged my brain up. I, it's so funny when I talk to people, I have no idea how I was doing so well in school. Like a lot of people with anorexia have tendencies of perfectionism and I was like determined to be like a straight A student, determined to be like a better runner and um, you know things of that nature and just be perfect and like I don't know how my brain was working because I could barely hold a conversation with anyone but I would still get straight A's like I just don't. I don't get it, um, but I, it definitely shut down a lot of relationships with people. I didn't want to go out because there would be food there. Um, I didn't have a really strong relationship with my parents because they saw me struggling and didn't really know what to do with that. And um, in the beginning, treatment was Maudsley, um, which is basically parents control what you eat. And that was just hell in a handbasket <laughs> you know it's just it's bad because it's like it takes away i mean you are taking away power from the eating disorder but you're also taking away power of the like person with the eating disorder <laughs> and it's just kind of this like really not great power dynamic um so <laughs> yeah that's definitely that was hard But 
I think I knew I was struggling. I don't know. I, there were days where I would, because I was running as well, um, and there were days where I would go for a run and I would just feel so horrible and like feel like I was gonna pass out. I mean, I never did. I know some people do, but like I didn't feel good. Um, but I don't think I really knew it was a problem until like the beginning of the summer, me and my friends went to the beach and like I didn't realize what I looked like. Like I just didn't, I couldn't see that for myself. I had such strong body dysmorphia that like I just thought when I looked in the mirror, like I looked huge and I look horrible. Um, and even seeing the pictures, I'm like, oh, my legs could be so much smaller, that they're huge. Um, but my mom looked and she was like, Alexa, this is not okay and we have to change something. Um, and I think that's, I think the wake up call really came when like my family was like, what is going on? Um, Cause I couldn't really see it. Um, I have been in and out of treatment for years. Um, I recently got out of treatment this past like August um, for what I would like to think is the last time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I still have an outpatient team and I think that's really helpful. I have a dietitian, I have a therapist, um, people that I can count on to like offer me support. But um, if this is the longest that it's been that I haven't gone into treatment, whether that be intensive outpatient or um, partial hospitalization or residential. Um, it's been the longest amount of time that I haven't had to do that. Um, I think another common misconception is like, well, I'm in a healthier body now and like I eat now and like I'm better. Um, I still struggle every day. Um, eating disorders are a mental health disorder. Um, so I have to fight the anorexia brain every, every time I get to a meal. <laughs> um, and I have down days and I have up days, I have down weeks um, that get scary and um, it's just a matter of trying to use the coping skills that I've learned um, in like treatment and from outpatient. Um, but I definitely have learned to talk to people more often and try to be open and just be like, hey, you know, I'm not doing so well. And you don't have to fully disclose like everything that's going on in your life, but like making sure that you have supports around you that know that you're going through a tough time and there are people that you trust is so important. I've found that like music has been really cathartic for me. Um, it's a really good creative outlet. I like to write music, I like to play music, I like to sing. Um, but I also love listening to music. God bless Lizzo because oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she is my all time favorite human being right now just because she's so body positive and like, she's like just like a bad bitch. I don't know. <laughs> um, and I really love that. Um, and I've started leaning more into, I think a big part of being in recovery is finding places to, to take the energy that you invested fully into your eating disorder and putting it into things that are actually going to make your life better. Um, and for me, that's been my faith. Um, that's been my business, photography um, and music. And I'm starting to like love life again. And it's really hard. I still haven't found a way to incorporate like joyful movement, which is like, I don't really like the word exercise. <laughs> um, I don't think it's, you know, something that I really struggle with. I don't know if I'll ever be able to run again, even though I used to love running. Um, but, you know, I'm still working, still working on it. If you are on the other end and you are experiencing, you know, witnessing someone in your life going through an eating disorder, or you believe that they're going through an eating disorder, here are some ways that you can help that person in need. Things that don't help, um, really quickly, things that don't help. Um, when people say to a skinny person, why don't you go eat a burger? Or you need to eat more, you're too skinny. Or when they say, why don't you try a salad? Or why don't you go work out? You are damaging 
people's perceptions of their bodies. You are damaging their body image by saying that. And I really hate it that it's normalized for people to say that about other people's body types, weights, and just who they are as a person. I personally hate it when people around me comment on other people's bodies in a poor way. That makes me feel so disgusted. Like I instantly lose respect for people who do that. It's not helpful. It isn't. Like, and people who do that, do that, they're just like, oh, I'm telling it like it is. No, you're being rude. You're being so rude. <laughs> so if you are noticing someone either gaining or losing weight in an unhealthy manner, and you know that this is being done in an unhealthy manner, make sure you're aware of the situation. Do not accuse someone of having an eating disorder or poor body image issues if you don't know exactly what's going on. That being said, if you do know what's going on, open up that conversation. Sit down with them and be like, hey, um, I've noticed that you've been losing a lot of weight recently or you've been gaining a lot of weight recently. Would you like to talk about what's going on? Or is there anything I can do to help you? Because this looks very unhealthy. If they are willing to talk about it, amazing. You can work it through with them, have them open up about, you know, why they're doing what they're doing in terms of their eating, and maybe work on them on an active way to recover. Like maybe plan out an eating schedule or plan out a check-in um, thing with them where you check in on them to make sure um, they're eating what they're supposed to or they have been eating or you know get an get a, get a food tracker you know like I used to do that with myself where I would write down what I ate every day to make sure that you know I'm eating what I should be and I'm eating enough you can do that um, if they're actively denying it or they don't want to openly talk about it that might be the time where either you talk to a family member of theirs or you move to a doctor <laughs> because when people get stuck in an eating disorder mindset it can get very dangerous very fast so if you do not have the right resources they could spiral into something that is very detrimental to themselves i've had friends who have really struggled and for a little while i didn't notice because i was also struggling um, but when i started going to treatment and then I would come out and like go back to college like the amount of the amount of body image issues and the amount of food issues that a lot of college people especially women have is incredible um, and my friend especially I would just notice that she was zoned out um, she struggled to come to the dining hall with me she would only eat certain foods um, and the exercise was a huge part for her like she would come back from a nine hour clinical with me and go to the gym, even though we'd been on our feet the entire time. Um, and I, I think it's hard to see someone else struggle, but it's also really nice to feel like I can help because I know where she's coming from. Um, and you can just tell someone's struggling because they're just not themselves anymore. Like you just kind of become a shadow of the person that you were before um, and your life just becomes fully invested in you know eating or not eating or behaviors of whatever type um, and you just become less of a person and I think when you start to see someone become more one-dimensional instead of 3D um, is kind of when you start to realize that they're struggling that they have one thing in their life that they focus on instead of a multitude of things. I'm still trying to <laughs> help her. Um, it's been a really long journey because I think when I was struggling it was really hard to reach out and be that person for someone else. Um, I think I'm so excited to kind of fill the therapist role because I feel like I do it anyways with a lot of my friends and for her it was a lot of long distance stuff. She's still at my, the school that I used to go to. Um, and it just, 
it's a lot of phone calls, it's a lot of making sure that they're okay. So she is currently in outpatient therapy and I'm really proud of her for taking that step. It freaked me out at first because I was like, there's no way she's gonna find an eating disorder specialist um, in time to like help her. And I think it's really scary because the people who are in their disorder don't realize how life-threatening it is and how important it is to get help as soon as possible. And even now, even though she's receiving therapy, um, she still has so many, um, I don't know what to call them, so many like things that stick with her still that I just worry, I think that she needs a higher level of care. But um, that's for her therapist to decide. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I've been able to try and help people get help. I've had other people who just have struggled with disordered eating because you don't have to have an eating disorder to struggle with disordered eating. Um, a lot of people struggle with disordered eating usually because of you know, depression or anxiety or they have an allergy and they just have to be so focused on what they're eating. Um, and so it's nice to know that people feel comfortable coming to me and asking me like, hey, like, how do you cope with this? How um, do I approach this subject with another person? I think the hardest part is having people aware that it's a problem because I think it's really easy to push it under the rug and just say, nothing's wrong, you know, I'm fine, and this is how I live, this is how I eat, this is how I, you know, exercise, whatever. Um, I think awareness is so important, and I think you have to make sure that they're willing to get help. Um, a lot of people with eating disorders are willful, not on purpose, just because their eating disorder kind of makes them that way, and they feel like, I don't want to get help, I don't need help, um, I don't deserve help, which even though that's self-deprecating, it's still willfulness and they have to be willing to get help um, and that's a really hard step to take. Sometimes you get help before you're willing and that's fine, you can do that and I've done that a lot of times, um, is going into treatment being like, this is stupid, like <laughs> this is not, this. I don't need this. Um, but I think the more you interact with people in the therapeutic field, um, the more you realize like, hey, the way that I'm living isn't normal and I can live a life like free from all these rules. Um, so I think one of the biggest misconceptions of eating disorders is that anorexia means that you're stick thin, you're a skeleton, you don't eat anything. Um, and like bulimia, like, people think it's gross and like you're just eating all the time like junk food just everything I just want people to know that that's not true I've had people tell me like even though they had anorexia like they still ate a cookie every day like there aren't foods that make you fat or make you skinny and you know having these different sub types of disorders doesn't mean that like you fit a specific like standard for that eating disorder um, and I think the other thing too is that like society skews the way that we eat and the way that we interact with food it's so frustrating because you know people feel so in need of like fixing themselves and fixing their body and like maybe when I'm fit I'll be happy and maybe when I'm skinny I'll feel better about myself and the diet industry is a billion dollar industry because it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because people keep coming back to diets because, you know, you lose weight and you gain it back. There is no like proven way to lose weight and keep it off. 95% of diets fail within the year and 98% of people who dieted and lost weight gained the weight back within, I believe, five years. Um, and there are so many different types of diets, and there's a reason for that, it's because they don't work. Um, and I think that any normal person can fall into the trap of like, my body is imperfect, the way that I eat is imperfect, therefore, like, I'm a failure. And I just want people to know that you know, it's okay to like get help when you're struggling with food, um, but it's also okay to eat whatever food you want and whatever food your body is telling you you need. Um, 
because there isn't any good or bad foods and there's no good or bad bodies. So that's about it for this episode and I would like to thank Alexa Rainey for being a part of this episode. I absolutely adore her. She is so amazing and she is literally one of the most positive people I have ever encountered in my life. Thank you for coming with me along this episode, but that's about it. Thank you for watching.